there we go. It's the afternoon of January 5th. Back at it here in the Iowa late muzzleloader season. And I've been having a tough time deciding where I should hunt tonight because I've got three really good options to choose from. Actually looks like a buck bedded right there on the hillside. Check that out here real quick. Yeah, definitely a buck. Let me get a better look at him here. Well, that's cool. That was a nice buck bedded there just off the highway. Uh, going back to the, the options that I had, the decision I need to make on where to hunt today. And originally my plan was to go back to that bean field that I'd hunted on New Year's Eve. Uh, I saw a couple shooter bucks there. They, you know, they came out just at the end of legal shooting time, but my thought was to get a little bit deeper in there and hope to catch up with those bucks again. But things got a little more complicated this morning when I was driving out to go um, hunting and scouting. Just as I was driving by some public land, I had a buck cross the road in front of me going back up into the public. So originally my thought was to go after that buck right away because it was only 30 minutes before legal shooting time. But the problem was the wind was out of the total wrong direction and also the snow was just super crunchy this morning. The, you know, it was dead calm. There was just probably no way I was gonna be able to go after that buck without blowing him out of the country. So I went on to another spot and didn't see anything while I was sitting there, but then I got up and pushed in a little bit farther and found a bunch of really good sign. And while I was scouting, I bumped a nice buck that that just heard me, didn't see me. So he just lightly spooked over the next ridge. So the wind would work to go after that buck, get ahead of, of where he went up into and try to catch him coming out this evening. So after the morning hunt there, you know, I'm, I've got three good options rattling around in my head. So after a, a lot of deliberating and looking at maps, talking with Aaron, I've decided that I'm gonna go after this buck that I saw from the road this morning. I think that's gonna be my best bet. And the good thing is now the weather conditions have turned in my favor. The wind has switched from the northwest out of the south southeast, which is perfect to go up in there. And also it's warmed up to about 40 degrees today. So the snow has softened again to the point where it's, you know, it's not so loud and crunchy. So I can hopefully sneak back up in here. And so my thought is, you know, with it being close to legal shooting time when I saw this buck is that he's probably not going to be betting far from where I saw him. I'm hoping he's going to go up into this cove and bed up on top of this ridge that's really the first good thick bedding cover uh, close to where I saw him from the road. All right, geared up and ready to go here. There is another vehicle in the parking lot here. I'm heading in that direction. His tracks were going back in that direction onto the public. So I'm going to head in. I already have an idea of where I want to get to, but I'm just going to go slow, gonna scout my way in, see what there is for sign. And I'm going to look and make sure that this guy didn't loop around and set up somewhere, you know, down closer to the bottom where, you know, we would be possibly competing for the same deer coming out or just, you know, just not a safe situation. So I can see him anywhere close to where I'm going. I'm just going to back out since he was here first. But from the looks of his tracks from the parking lot, there shouldn't be any issues as far as running into each other. set of tracks right there. As you can tell, not far off the road, it's right behind me where the vehicle's passing right now, is where I saw that buck cross this morning. So my hope is, is that buck came up into this cove and hopefully bedded somewhere up on that ridge or farther back up in this draw here. And the sign started to pick up as I got closer here. There's several trails that come off of that ridge and converge and up by that old wooden platform stand up there. There's a pretty good beaten trail that comes across and then heads back out across the road and, you know, into more cover and then eventually crop fields beyond there. 
Originally I came in not knowing if I was going to just hunt off the ground or get up in a tree with a saddle, but I'm definitely glad I brought the saddle gear. Because this, I think this spot right here maximizes my opportunities. You know, I can cover these trails that come off of the ridge there. If anything comes down this draw here, I can shoot that. Anything comes off of the ridge or comes along the creek, I can shoot all that as well. By the look of the map and by what the other guys have talked about, you know, just up on this ridge here, should be good bedding cover. And then I'm just off of that, right on this transition here. You know, I got about as close as I could given the weather conditions. So we'll see if changing the game plans is worth it. Not sure where Aaron and Ted ended up, but hopefully Ted gets a shot at redemption.
It looked good. That was a good buck right there. I don't know if that was a big one. I small saw this morning, but that is a big buck. Whew. I was just watching that buck that came by earlier. He was looking back. I thought I heard something coming off this ridge, and sure enough, there's a whole bunch of deer coming. Doe and two fawns in the lead, and then there's, I don't know what else there was. There was several. Looked like two or three bucks in there, and there was one big one that I picked out there. Looked like he was a good five by five. Got a little bit chaotic as it as it tends to do when you're self-filming. I could see him playing his day on my on the left hand side, but I was running out of room with the camera and I had to pass it around the tree. <laughs> and I would have liked to have let him, you know, get in the wide open. That would have been the ideal situation. But that lead doe was already working her way down the trail. And as I saw, as you saw earlier, that buck and picked up my scent about right there. You know, that would have been ideal, but I had an opening right here. I just, up like this, there was a little too much brush, and as I leaned down, I had an opening, you know, a decent size opening right through there. There might have been a couple small little twigs immediately in front of him, but at this distance, I was able to thread it right through there. That is awesome, man. I'm fired up. Only bad thing is, a 360 camera wasn't rolling. I thought I'd hit it twice, but apparently it just I just turned it on, didn't get the record button pressed. So that is the only bad thing. I missed out on that. Whole late season hunt here in Iowa in the snow. That is awesome. Alright. There's the setup. Since I got a little bit of light here, I'm gonna go ahead and look for blood at point of impact. Shot looked good on the camera. I mean, you can't tell a whole lot on that little LCD, but he, he bucked, you know, kind of didn't do a full mule kick, but when he took off, I kind of lost him with all the other deer. But like I said, I'd be shocked, you know, at, at that distance if, if I didn't just reel him. Go check it out here. It shouldn't be too tough to line up. He's only 45 yards away. Oh, there's... If that's blood, it is everywhere. Oh yeah. There's hair, blood, and blood. Just pouring. <laughs> Doesn't get much better than that. Here's that trail coming off the ridge there. And pretty well-defined trail right there. I'm guessing it didn't go far, probably just the, over that next little ridge right there, but I'm going to wait for the other guys and have a tracking party. There you go, boys. That's what we got from Greg. Sent us a picture of blood. So, hopefully we got a buck down. Not sure where he's at even, but we're going to have to find out and hopefully go drag one out. That'd be alright. be a good deal. Let's go. Driving well, in. What, 12 hours ago, <laughs> I drove by here, saw that deer cross the road in front of Didn't me. Didn't you almost hit him with your truck? Yeah, like two or three seconds away. Like, had the timing been a little bit different, I would he'd have been in my grill. <laughs> We've had but, enough enough bucks. Yeah, we don't need any trucks. more of that. <laughs> Jeez. Got one. Yeah. Glass shattered. You just had to hit the window then? I got to have all this. Got to get the gun. Got to get the camera on him. It was... I will say it probably wasn't my best self-filming job ever, but <laughs> well, Greg's there's... heart got to pound him out. Oh, I almost got to full panic mode. Did they come off out, off the hill in mm -hmm. the thick timber, or did they come up through the bottom? No, they came off the hill. Yep. Well, that's where we saw him feeding last night. Ted was just right across the road over uh -huh. there. Yeah, the I mean north. that's that's the thing. It's like it, it goes back to you know how many times is like some form of scouting paid off for us oh, yeah. and like driving around you spot a deer and I mean, that's yeah, what happened yeah. I spotted this deer this morning then I got to talking to Warb about about this area I've never personally hunted back in here but I know he has Jake you probably have yeah. you know, yeah. we've got a trail camera not far you guys drove by here the other day like we just got to talking it's like yeah it makes sense and like my thought was that buck you know he was 30 minutes before legal shooting time he crossed the road right there my thought was and talking with Aaron's like he's probably going to go bed back up on this ridge or back up in this cove right here you know yeah. first available good cover uh -huh. 
right. so I felt like I got in as close as I could given yeah. the circumstances mm -hmm. and based on those trails coming off that ridge it's like pretty good situation uh -huh. <laughs> Damn, <man. laughs> real good work. situation Let's go get him <laughs> shouldn't be too bad getting him out as long as he didn't go well. too far somebody's got themselves an old wooden platform in that tree yeah. with a bunch of spikes going up and yeah. those deer would have walked right by this tonight those old stands are usually in you're gonna want to set up by those good spots That's yeah, bright, long blood, you can see bubbles in it. <laughs> yeah, safe to say, I think we can get that. <laughs> I'm gonna get my hands on this thing first. Right there. <laughs> right there. Easy. They make it 50 yards. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. That's a dandy. I thought dandy he had tall dandy. brow tines and yeah. something extra going on there. <laughs> oh, he's a he's a mess. Yeah, that's awesome. Pretty good year for tall brow tying ten pointers. I'll Greg. take that. I'll take that every <laughs> year. <laughs> we'll get them cleaned up and get a little bit better look at them. But this is how we found them. Pretty sure we'll this this will probably be in black and white. <laughs> YouTube be, won't like this. YouTube no. will be real frustrated about oh, this. Oh man, that <laughs> thing is cool. Heck yeah. His tarsals are black. Look at that. Like I can smell I can him. Smell him. Yeah, Definitely smell him. Wow. Get him tagged so we can move him out yeah. of this blood mess. Barnes expander. Spitfire R TMZ. Yeah, it was rough on him. Yeah. Dude, he didn't go anywhere. Oh, oh. what the heck, Ted? <laughs> Dead go right right on. On. Superman over here. We were just <laughs> talking about that. We were trying to drag him out of the blood pile over there so we could get more footage of the thing. And the thing they were just my bad. Right ah, that's all right. I wasn't I mean, being careful with it either. You have to get you some super glue, Greg. Yeah. yeah. I've just never had that happen to me. I've like, never had it happen. Obviously, I've, I've seen, seen it happen over and over. I've seen it a hundred times happen to people on video and stuff like that or in pictures, but. Well, there you go. Now, what? Are you going to grab on the other one? <laughs> no, I guess. Grab on his leg. Grab lift leg, his head up by his ear, maybe. Should have known better than that. <laughs> My bad. I'm, I didn't mean to pull his rack. I'm off. afraid the other one's gonna pop off. I'm gonna <laughs> smack myself in the face with it. It'll be his final revenge. Uh huh. I'd say you talk oh, yeah. to our buddy Thad DeMoss, and he'll have yeah, an answer he, for I'm that. I'm sure he can fix me up. <laughs> or fix well. him up. That's cool. Big old mature buck. Yeah, man. I love this late muzzleloader hunt. The shotgun season's fun in a different way. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just wild. Yeah. It's wi I mean, obviously, if you've watched the shotgun videos, you know how crazy it gets. You know, going back to growing up in, in Nebraska, like, I would almost have to say that the late season, like December, was some of my favorite time to hunt. Yeah. Get snow on the ground, you get the cold weather, and on the public land there, it seemed like that's really what it took to get the, to mm -hmm. get the deer moving, besides yeah. the rut because it was so heavily pressured. You get a cold front or something, move through, dump a bunch of snow, and that's when the hunting got good on the public right, land yeah. there. That's probably why I love hunting in the snow so much, but that's another great thing about Iowa's late muzzleloader season, and it's three weeks long. Yeah. Like you get, you have the opportunity to hunt different weather conditions yeah, and have, you know, have season. snow and cold fronts and stuff like that that you know, really get deer up and moving. People are always asking too, like how long after the pressure will deer go back to acting normal? The end of the second shotgun season would have been the last big wave of hunting pressure on these deer. Yeah. And that was sure. two, weeks two weeks ago. ago. But they're acting yeah. normal right now. I mean, yeah. they're they're Better not being. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're <laughs> yeah, they're not super say. spooky. They're they're close to the road. I mean, they just haven't been messed with. They haven't been messed with for two weeks, and that's all the more time it took. We're still seeing gobs of deer, lots yeah, of big bucks. Of yeah. Yeah. Snow I mean, really helps to read sign. To yeah, it's, that's a big confidence boost when you, the snow's been on the ground for five, six days and you get to a spot and nobody's been in there. Yeah. The same thing with this spot. You know, yeah. There's a beaten trail coming out of there. Saw that big buck going in here this morning. You know, just looked at the sign coming in. I was like, yeah, I mean, it just all makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's a great time to be hunting. Big old buck though. Good. Yeah, girl. big body thing. Yeah. Big old I mean, it's, buck. the rack is similar to that one I shot back in October with my bow, but this thing is way bigger bodied. Greg's year, the tall brow <laughs> ten pointer, boy. That. Can't beat that. Can't beat it. That's awesome. You bring those into my house, my soon-to-be wife's gonna have a conniption. Those tarsals? I'm not sure who brings tarsals into the house, but <laughs> all right. 
Ted and Jake. Each your own. <laughs> All right, so here's a story from my childhood days. Deer scents were a big thing, you know, uh -huh. back in the day. And deer scents were expensive, so I decided to make my own. Uh -huh. So this time of year, I'd go out and collect deer pee in the snow. Oh, and then yeah. I put it like in a little Tupperware and, and then <laughs> melt it, put it in a deer urine bottle and uh -huh. oh, it reeks so bad. Like it was genius. It was, told, no, it was just totally pointless, but you know, when you're 12, 13 years old and getting into hunting and like excited <laughs> about all these little gimmicks and stuff like that, like I had to, I had to make my own deer pee. I'm pretty sure my dad got sick of it because I, I would put it in the fridge to melt it. Well, no, the the, uh, the garage fridge. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty bad to put it in the actual house <laughs> fridge, but oh yeah, good times. There you go. DIY deer urine. Yeah. Do it yourself. <laughs>